the rites of passage of growing older is getting a job. Now, unlike school, some of them will actually pay you money for the work that you do. I may get a real job when I grow up. But for now, I'm just going to talk about jobs and the money you earn if you have one. Let's say you get a job at Clown Burger, work in the drive through window. Yes, ma'am. Would you like fries with that order? OK, you got to start somewhere. This job has an hourly wage of $8. That means for each hour you work, you earn $8. So if you worked two hours, you would earn $16. 10 hours of work would earn you $80. We could write an equation for this situation. If we let X represent the number of hours you work and Y represent your pay, we could say that Y equals 8 times X. So, for example, if you worked a 20-hour week, replace the X with 20, multiply by 8, and your pay is $160. This equation, Y equals 8X, is an example of equations in the form Y equals KX. Y equals KX describes what is known as direct variation. This is true when k is any number except 0. We say that y varies directly as x. As x changes, y changes. The more you work, the more you make. The change happens at a constant rate, indicated by the letter k, which is known as the constant of variation. In our example, the k, which is the hourly wage, is positive. So as x increases, y increases. As x decreases, y decreases. Now in a different situation, k could have been negative, and in that setting, y would have decreased as x increased. So in the case of your job, the pay you earn varies directly as the number of hours you work, and the constant of variation is your hourly wage, which is 8. We can graph the equation by choosing and connecting a few points. And if we determine the slope, either by using the graph or by calculating it with our formula for slope, we find that the slope of 8, which is our rate of change, is the same as the constant of variation. Back on the job, you've worked hard, and now you're the manager of Clown Burger, with twice the pay and twice the responsibility. Yes, ma'am. Would you like fries with that order? We may want to revisit our career goals. In any event, you're now making $16 an hour. So the direct variation is now y equals 16x. If we graph this equation, we see that the greater constant of variation has resulted in a greater rate of change and a greater slope. Also notice that both lines pass through the origin. The graph of y equals kx will always pass through the origin y-intercept will always be zero. And this illustrates that if you work no hours, you'll get no pay. Even if we don't know the constant, we can determine it by using the general equation for direct variation. Let's say you're offered a job that will pay $1,200 for a 40-hour week. You'd like to determine how much that would pay in a month. We'll start with the equation y equals kx and we'll substitute the x and y values. In this case, the number of hours, 40, and the pay earned in those hours, 1,200. Now we can calculate the constant of variation by dividing both sides of the equation by 40. k equals 30, which is our hourly wage. But remember, we wanted to find out how much we would make in a month. Now, a month has an average of 22 working days when you take away the weekends. And at eight hours a day, that's 176 hours. So back to our y equals kx. But now we know k is 30, and x is 176. By multiplying, we find that y equals 5,280. That's $5,280 a month. Now there's a job with no clowning around. So direct variation is a situation where one quantity varies directly as another quantity. In our examples, y increased as x increased. 
But if our constant of variation had been negative, y would have decreased as x increased. See if you can think of a situation where that would happen. And make sure you use the equation y equals kx in any problem involving direct variation. Hey, would you like fries? Oh, oh never mind.